Hey, what's up? Uh, it's another unboxing video. I'm going to try to make this one quick, as, as quick as possible. I know I tend to ramble and get uh, a bit long, so let's get into it. So you know by the title, but now it's going to be an NTH watch. This is one of the newer ones that they just released. Um, this is the Nakin Vintage White, and this is the Full Loom uh, White Dial. It's actually a little bit off-white, um, but... It looks good and uh, uh, the bezel is loomed as well and it comes in a date and a no date version and you can see from the box here uh, this is computer rendering but this would be the no date and uh, the date I got the date version uh, which has a, a date window in the bottom here and uh, we'll get right into it all right so it comes in a very typical NTH packaging like this And there we go. And usually they'll give you this card piece thing that you can, I believe you stick on like your cell phone and basically you can use it as like a, I guess, a card or credit card holder or something. Um, never really use it, but it's kind of cool. It comes with it and it's kind of in this leather red packaging. And actually I did unbox this already. Um, I did it last night. Uh, but I wasn't really pleased with the video. I kind of rambled on a bit, but normally it will be wrapped up in all the plastics and everything. Uh, but anyways, here we go. Here we go. And I've already actually sized this watch. And uh, here are the links I took out. The screw uh, links, so it's real easy. And you do get an extra set as well in case you need it to be even bigger. So they usually come with a, an extra set. Um, let's put this away. And actually, let's set this aside for a second. And put the packaging away quickly. Here we go. And this is a NTH's one focus subline and uh, uh what would be called is it short for submariner uh they just call oh, a, lot of, a lot of times they just call these the nth subs and there's all these dial and hand variations and uh different bezels uh but this is a version two and basically what they've done is added crown guards i think they may have uh, made this shape of the crown a little bit, maybe not as big or thick. I think when it was before, when it didn't have these, they have like a more of a, a big crown look to it. But uh, I got to compare it to my old photos of my other NTH watches, which were the older version, to see. But I believe that might be different too. But the loom is still in the crown. I think most of them always uh, still have like a loomed crown with a logo in it. Focus. Uh, drill lugs. Um, that's always uh, what they always have too. Just a nice uh, brush finishing on the sides. Goes across and uh, with vertical brushing, I believe, going down the, the top. And uh, they got a nice little high polished edge that runs around this as well. I believe it's the same as the previous version. I don't know. I don't think that's changed as well. And the only other difference usually is, uh, not usually, but the other difference is uh, the bezel. Before they used to have like a, a different grip. And uh, this one is, I guess, more Submariner-ish, like Rolex Submariner-ish uh, style with the scalloped um, edges. Uh, but uh, the previous version are more angular like more square like like almost like little gears or cogs around it which i kind of liked um but they always have a positive no play in there you can hear that and it sounds good i think no back play it just clicks into really nice place uh good alignment I don't think I've ever had any that were really off alignment. And 
There you go. And uh, yeah. And what else? Case back is solid. Uh, I think they could. Uh, it's. Bit, I don't know. I guess they're trying to keep it with a clean tool by like uh, what you'd see in, like on a also like a Rolex Mariner or a Tudor uh, Black Bay or even a. I think a Pelagos doesn't really have much of a decoration either. And uh, it does have a nice solid uh, end links, uh, solid links, again screws. Um, Solid milled clasp. You can see it's not stamped. And uh, so it's, I guess it's a double lock with a dual button to point and a lip lock over here. And the logo signed, uh, brush finishing, and uh, I don't think this is high polish, it's also brushed, and, which is fine. I generally like more brushes off brush finishing across. I don't need the high polish uh, center links, which they never did, but uh, which is good. Uh, these are male end links. Uh, I think they could have done with uh, with maybe females if they're going to do anything, any other improvements in the future or changes. Uh, but I can wear it. It's not too bad. It curves down really good. And as you can see, actually, uh, yeah, it does come down a bit. Uh, and I guess it does extend out from the lugs but I mean unless your wrist is super small um, it shouldn't matter this is not going to be a review though I'm just quickly going to respect so I don't know what the lug to lug is it's not super long and it does curve down a bit you can see uh, and I think it naturally flows over the wrist and I'll show it to you real quickly on my wrist uh, just so you get an idea and uh, what else it wouldn't hurt to have a display case back, but they're using usually use Miyota movements, and this one is using the ninety fifteen uh, high beat um, date. This is the date version. If they didn't, they usually use the. If there's no date, they would have the uh, ninety. It's the ninety five S, not the ninety thirty nine. Uh, I forget the difference, but I believe one of them basically. They're both no dates, but one of them might have been might be used for a potentially an open heart version of the movement. So you can, if you have an open heart, you'd be able to see it. Uh, I think that's mainly the only difference between the ninety five S, if I got the numbers correctly, and the ninety thirty nine, and they just use that ninety five S. Um, what else is there? Um, Loom is usually quite good on their watches. Um, do a loom shot in a moment real quickly just so you can see uh, how it looks like um, but yeah you can see see it's got a nice textured dial it's kind of old school at least I consider like some vintage dive watches that kind of have this grainy texture to it that's what I remember growing up as a kid when I had some some certain dive watches and when I went to the store to look at some watches too uh, I said, hmm, interesting. Like sometimes it might even be like slightly speckled. I remember I was looking at Tag Heuer uh, dive watches uh, back in the day, and uh, that was something that that stood out to me. Um, and uh, and that actually kind of inspired me in my journey to uh, really be hooked on white dial divers with the black bezel, because my old Tag Heuer, uh, which was a, a dive watch. My first luxury watch that I bought for myself, uh, very entry level, but still, nonetheless, uh, I had that for like, gosh, it must have been 12 years from the 90s, mid 90s to mid 2000s. But somehow I lost it after I moved into uh, my new home. <laughs> and that always bummed me out. I just, like, uh, about, I'd say, two weeks or so, maybe a month at most in, uh, we had been doing some. Uh, work around the house, and then I, I just some reason I took, oh, so I took off my watch, I don't work with them, and I don't know where I placed it, and, uh, and it took me a couple, a little bit of time to realize, wait a minute, I was that busy, uh, just doing stuff that, what the heck happened to my watch, and I never found it, and uh, I could rebuy it, but it didn't seem worth it to spend, even really beat up, they still cost, I feel like almost as much as when I paid for it, or, or maybe technically more, I don't know, they were like in the 600-ish range, and and it was a quartz diver, but it was solid, um, but anyways, 
uh, you've seen way a few years now i've been i've been modding watches to look like that i've been buying some and in fact uh to compare to this uh i got this um recently too as you know this is this christopher ward c60 trident pro 300 i think that's what you would pronounce it this is also 40 millimeters let me back it up a bit and uh, this is a more stark pure white dial it's a uh, smooth it's uh, but it's matte um it's from aware i don't see really much shine in it um because whatever shine i think i'm picking up from it it's from uh but the reflection off of the crystal versus actually on a dial. I'm pretty sure it was a matte dial. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I was debating between these two. And uh, ultimately, I did decide that this one is nicer made. It's got the, oh, you can't, I'm not sure. Well, it has the uh, quick adjust, um, more of a taper to the bracelet. This goes from 20 down to, I believe, around 16. Then this is a, a very standard 20 to 18. Uh, not as dramatic. Uh, it's just, this one just feels more refined. It's got quick release. And no, no uh, uh, drill lug holes, but uh, I think that the way this, how fancy this one is designed with, with this new light catcher key, sort of latest one, which is actually it's, it's thinner than it was before. Um, it's, uh, you gotta admit that the NTH does pretty well staying thin as well. It always has, it was always like 11 and a half, if not less than that, or 10 and a half millimeters. Uh, but, uh, yeah. And it's also a 300 meter dive watch. Uh, as you should say on the dial. Yeah. 300. So they're both 300. Um, come on, focus, focus. And fully, both have fully on bezel. This has the indexes, though, that are loomed. It's all BGW9 versus this, you'll see, is, uh, as, I think it's just like C3, so it's green, and the bezel is blue. So it's a bicolor, but it looks cool. And um, both sign crowns. This one is loomed, though. Uh, it's just, I don't know. I like, uh, they have both good uh, bezel action as well. And I showed this off earlier. Uh, in my un unboxing a little bit i'll get around to doing an actual review of these but i have so many of these watches the main difference is pretty much the case and bezel uh uh design you know with the crown guards and this uh and the rest of it is pretty much a lot like what they've done in the past with the version one so i'm not sure if it really warrants a, a, a full review if not a very long one but uh, anyways, I just want to quickly get this out. Um, we'll probably do a, a closer comparison to these two, but I think it's pretty obvious here. Um, can I, should I have both? Um, can they both exist in my collection? Um, potentially. Um, I don't know. It's going to take me a little bit of time to figure out if, which one I'm feeling more if equally and, um, you know. I don't know, and they both have male ink links, but they again they, they really do curve down pretty well. Of course, this one's more so with the case, I guess. And uh, well, we'll see, but let's do a close out real quickly. Um, just down here, close this up. Oh, I was going to show it to you on my wrist, so uh, I have a wrist size just under seven inches. There we go. Uh, it fits pretty well. Not really much of a gap. I don't know if you can show it from this side on the wrist. And yeah, it works pretty well. Again, I don't remember what the lug to lug is. I look it up on the website if you really need to know uh, i'll probably throw it in in the in my review or uh later but let's turn off the lights and check it out yeah bump up the iso a bit yeah 
Can you focus? Let's see. There you go. And I didn't give the Crucifer much of a charge. It wasn't under light as much. But let me see here. Let me cheat a little bit. Put it closer to my LED lights above. And we'll do this. Sorry. There we go. And to the naked eye, definitely this has a lot thicker application in terms of the, the boldness of the lip numbers, for instance, on the bezel. Um, I can see it actually uh, right now, uh, the, the Christopher Ward. But um, I think generally Intace has some good application. And of course, the C3 loom on the dial um, glows green. Yeah, let me see. Did I do a fair comparison? One more time. Sorry about the washedness. I didn't want to adjust my ISO. So here, you get an idea what they look like. And that's about it. So uh, stay tuned. I'm pretty sure you'll see more of both of these. Uh, in my watch you strap in episodes and i'll eventually get to a fuller review of these but um that's it for now thanks for watching hey what's up this is another episode of watch you strap in and actually i'm going to do this a little bit differently i was going to put this at the beginning of uh, as an add-on to a unboxing of this watch but it seemed kind of reverse to show this and then do the unboxing and I, I, there's some thoughts that I had in that unboxing that I forgot to add. So I guess I'm going to do this and uh, watch you unstrap it in as an add-on to the end of that. Uh, one, to show off how it looks like in natural lighting. and looks quite good. And this is the uh, Nakin, uh, uh, <laughs> Nakin Vintage White. Uh, this is in the, the version 2 subs, uh, design, you know, uh, case shape. Uh, well, case design, the shape is basically the same, but they added the crown guards and the bezel was a little different. But other than that, uh, most of the rest of it is basically the same, same bracelet. And so, yeah, as a watcher strap in, I show these as, these are not watch reviews, they just show uh, strap choice. And uh, usually it's a strap that's uh, going to be uh, stock on the watch first, and then I'll uh, start showing some other options. And so, yeah, it's basically a stainless steel bracelet that comes with the watch. Uh... 20 down to 18 millimeters, pretty standard for uh, fully milk class, so pretty standard for NTH, uh, like the other subs. Uh, so it's good quality, uh, well built, and uh, yeah, and uh, that's basically it. But I just wanted to actually go into some thoughts about this that I forgot to include in my unboxing video. One, uh, between a date and no date version, I chose a date with this one because in my job I kind of need. Um, I do use uh, reference to date quite often. Yes, I could use my phone, which I always have on me, but uh, having a date uh, adds, adds that practicality to it. Additionally, uh, yeah, it would have been a little bit more cleaner or symmetrical, sort of, if I had gone dateless so that the 6 o'clock index would match the ones at the 9 and 3, right? Uh, as you would expect. But I think the way this is done and the way some of the other ones are done, not just this particular colorway uh, date window works at the six keeps the symmetry and the fact that this black and kind of matches the the uh, uh, indexes anyways uh, it kind of blends in and, and looks like it especially at, when it gets low light and you will see that or have saw, saw that in the uh, uh, low light shot that I <coughs> showed earlier in my unboxing just prior to adding this on to the end of the video and uh, yeah so um, in that standpoint, uh, you get basically uh, still dial symmetry in daytime, as well as uh, when the light goes down, uh, you still maintain that as well, which is nice, uh, especially with this full loom dial. Now, if you had one that was a regular other dial where it's not a full loom, where you have the glow on the indexes, uh, which I have done before, if you see my other NTH subs uh, that I had with a date, namely the Nakian Renegade, um, and I actually went, that's why I went with a no date uh, on my second run on that. Uh, it's because, yeah, and uh, daytime it kind of matches because the date wheel is white as as the indexes are. Uh, but when the light goes out, you'll get that. That doesn't glow down there, right? So uh, at the six, so you're going to have a negative space. So you have like a little 
break in the dial in terms of uh, all the indices or rather lack of all the indices you have 11 of them uh, so in that case you may want to go with a no date version so that you uh, can keep that symmetry both in the day and especially at, and at, as well as night if that matters to you um other thing i wanted to add is um uh, yeah, this is kind of a, well, it's often an homage to like a Tudor snowflake of some sort. Um, I'm kind of thinking maybe, uh, you know, I feel it's a bit like a Pelagost as well. And as, by the way, I would like to get one, a 30, one of those new 39 uh, millimeter Pelagos. But uh, I'm waiting, like probably a lot of others, for a blue version. Uh, so in the meantime, uh, this is kind of a placeholder. And I didn't want to just do a straight homage because there are plenty of them out there right now. You can probably get off of AliExpress, like through San Martin or something like that. Uh, yeah, uh, I wanted to do something different. And I do like white dial, black bezel divers. And this has a full loom bezel as well as, of course, the dial. And so, yeah, in that sense, it's something different. It's familiar, but uh, it's kind of its own thing. So it's not a straight homage, which uh, I think is... Uh, not a bad way to go. Anyways, that's about it. I gotta get going. So thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one. And thanks for watching the unboxing earlier. And uh, that's it. Bye.